<clears throat> All right, good morning, everybody. This is a brief update here from the Gardens of Hope. Give me one second. All right. So, for those of you who do not know, the Gardens of Hope is a 501c3 nonprofit, and we're focused about. Uh, Therapeutic horticulture. We have a two and a half acre garden here in Paris, and we've got a couple of other projects going, one in Georgia, one in Texas, and uh, possibly one in your town coming soon. The idea is that we use the gardens uh, as a therapeutic device, working with your hands, being in nature, uh, learning. It's an educational tool, bringing kids out, uh, just the community experience. There's uh, all kinds of uh, validated techniques that are beneficial both for mental and uh, physical health. So we've been doing this now for almost six months and we've actually been doing it for about 25 years here in our gardens. And We've got the 501c3 set up, and what a lot of people don't realize is that a nonprofit is actually a business and it has to be treated like one. So, for example, here at the Gardens of Hope, um, you know, it's a physical garden, it's a little farm. We've got chickens and we've got uh, all kinds of vegetable gardens and um, all kinds of different projects that are going on, and not to mention just the maintenance and you know, the care and feeding of, uh, of a two and a half acre garden. Uh, we've had people coming constantly for the last 25 years. Um, sorry, I've got two lives going on and I'm trying to make it work, but you know, one of the things I could really use is some help in the technological side of things i really don't know what i'm doing with this stuff so i can't see any comments on facebook instagram it looks like i can but i don't think there are any yet uh, so anyhow we're doing our best we can and uh, if i end up seeing comments later on i'll certainly answer to them um, so what you find out as a business is that you have to have management involved with the plan, the people that have the ideas and the wherewithal to make things happen. You have to have a location. Oh, there's Laura. Hello, Laura. How you doing? And you have to have enough of a passion to make something like this happen. This is not uh, a project that just happens on its own. Uh, you got to care enough about something to make it work. Uh, for example, our, our gardens, you know, we've got a hugel culture, we've got a, a shade house that we propagate and start a lot of plants in, we've got a, a bunch of raised bed gardens, um, we've got our microgreen project, we've got all kinds of uh, activities going on, we've got composting, we've got red worms, meal worms, so many little projects that are happening, also even just maintaining and creating the botanical garden. And we've had all kinds of people participate on many levels. We've got people that have set up as, you know, part of the primary team. We've got um, fundraising people uh, pledging to help. We've got um, you know, volunteers and, and people that are, you know, more than volunteers. What you find out, though, with a project like this is you've got to have enough of a core to just make this thing happen, whether or not anybody else is here. And uh, i got to hard lesson the last couple of weeks about that um, but here we are we're making it happen and so um, we've had probably a dozen or two dozen people um, jump in and want to be a part of this and engaged involved in some way shape or form and you know life happens um, it's the middle of summer things are hot um, you know, people have their, their regular lives to live as well. So what I've realized is that if there's enough of me um, and hopefully my wife to carry this on our backs, it doesn't have to move fast. It can be in one or two people involved. Hell, it can just be healing me. Um, and if nothing more, at least it's worth it for that. 
But what we have found is that a lot of people um, are starting to get touched by this, and they've come out. And you know, again, the summer is a little bit limiting, but people have come out and really been profoundly affected. And uh, I really believe in my heart that this is a tool that is going to really touch a lot of people in the years to come. And as long as we can carry it on our back as needed, we'll be all right. Uh, with regards to volunteers, uh, I've always tried to include as many people as we can in as many ways as possible, especially in the creative process. But it turns out people just, um, it's, it's, it's more than most people can handle. So what I'm doing now is we're creating a system where if somebody wants to come and volunteer, we'll figure out a project. Everything will be a little more structured than it has been in the past. Uh, if somebody wants to be involved in a creative process, we can consult and figure that out. But for the most part, it's going to be a, more of a structured program. We have a ways we do things here, things that work. Uh, we can teach you. We can get you involved in anything from a low-impact creative project to a high-impact physically demanding project. There's just everything in, um, in between to, to, to do and to learn and grow from. Same thing with educational projects. We've got some schools that want to be involved and we've got a lot of things uh, that are happening. <laughs> with regards to the people that are you know, engaged on a deeper level, we have an advisory board um, that we've put together and really I think our biggest target right now is veterans. Um, we've got a lot of people, we've got three veterans now that are involved in our advisory team and all it means is that I've got people that are veterans that know what it's like to be a veteran. And um, we can communicate with other veterans and they can help us to uh, create a program that makes the most sense and works. Um, so that's what's happening right now. We really welcome people with any kind of mental issue, uh, but veterans especially, you guys have been through a lot. and. Uh, people don't listen a lot and so just want you guys to know any veteran that if you want to get involved uh, even just come out here and sit in a quiet safe place uh, we welcome you finally well not finally uh, our microgreens project it's going along pretty well and we've had uh, a bunch of help from different people um, but sometimes things, wells dry up and people uh, can't do what they said. And so um, right now I'm, I'm handling the lion's share of the microgreens. Liz is helping out some too. And we're going to make them available um, as always. We've had a number of people that have signed up or, or filled out a, a form um, that are interested in microgreens being delivered. And uh, I think that once the fall comes and the weather cools off, I'm going to give it a try. I know that they have produce that gets delivered, and there's all kinds of things that, that can survive a, a trip. I don't know if it's worth the cost of shipping, but we'll find out. Um, so anyways, stay tuned. We're going to wait until probably November, uh, maybe the end of October when it really cools off. I know that microgreens don't survive the heat. Uh, once they've been cut for very long. So we'll definitely um, uh, let you know when, when they'll be available to ship. We'll, we'll do it on a test basis. We're working on, right now, we kind of had to reset. We had uh, a lot of help at one point. Now we don't. And so we've got a handful of things available right now. And... Um, Right now I've got sunflowers and red radishes and a few other things, a little bit of cilantro. But we've got a whole new system in place and we're logging and monitoring everything. And so we're going to have uh, broccoli, uh, peas, sunflowers and radishes or some spicy green pretty much as a staple now. Those are going to be the ones that we'll have no matter what. And then we'll be rotating the other ones through. I've got alfalfa that's been planted um, I'm going to be planting Brussels sprouts and uh, kale and uh, uh, curled cress, a bunch of things today. And so there's just going to be a regular rotation. I'll get back into, uh, hey, how's it going, Reggie? Um, I'll get back into announcing what's available here in a few days. I've got uh, probably about three, four days before we have a good rotation coming back up. 
but it'll be like this for uh, forever. I don't know how much delivery we're going to be able to do, um, but we do have pickup available at uh, in Paris or Lake Elsinore. And if we've got, you know, a group of people that want to get together and order some things, we can definitely arrange a delivery. Um, so bear with us. We appreciate all the help so far. The, this project, the microgreens project, has really uh, carried the, the cost of doing this. Now for the most exciting announcement, uh, a couple weeks ago, we had a visit from uh, the head of a mental health facility here in Riverside County and a number of caseworkers, and we gave them a tour. And we just heard back last week that uh, they're excited and they're going to engage our program. Uh, the, the director's gone on vacation for a little while. Um, but the first part of October, uh, we're going to be getting together and putting these programs together. So. I'm super excited. The idea is that they're going to be able to fund some of their clients and patients to come out <clears throat> and um, get involved in workshops and, and sessions, et cetera. And we're going to be applying for grants so that we can um, cover the cost of people that can't afford to come out. And the idea is really volunteers, as much as we love you, and thank you, thank you, we're excited. And I really think that this is the beginning, because once we have this going, uh, then we can really reach out and go after some grants and, you know, show a working project, and that's really the key of this, the people that are s serious about uh, supporting nonprofits, they want to see things work just like any business. And the key is, you just can't rely on volunteers to do everything, it's just... I've run a, the Human Solution for 15 years, and we've had all volunteers the whole time. And if you could have some idea of how many people have come and gone, um, it's just not sustainable. It requires a, one or two people with a lot of heart, which I happen to be, but you know, you can only be spread so thin. So in this case, we're really putting together um, a proje project that's going to create a small staff and be able to grow from actual paid positions. And right now, my wife and I are gonna be the key volunteers. And we, of course, we welcome everybody to be involved as much as you want to or can. Um, and, you know, people come and go. So if you've gone and you wanna come back, we welcome you always. Um, we're just doing this with a specific kind of a purpose now. Uh, there's a specific opportunity right now, though, if, if somebody wants to get involved and volunteer and, and, and help to create and learn these projects that we're developing, um, you'll be first in line for a paid position once we get some funding. So um, I'm welcoming this. Um, you know, we're helping a lot of people, even the people that are just getting involved a little bit. If you come out to these gardens, if you get your hands dirty or you decide to take on gardening in your own spot, um, it's therapeutic. It helps mind, body, spirit, and uh, I just encourage everybody to get involved and support, uh, if not your own garden, this garden at the Gardens of Hope, and uh, we're here to help. All right. Thank you, everybody, for being a part of this, and we'll talk soon. How do you end this thing? Oh, there it is.